smoking definitely brings nothing for us except harms and diseases. According to the World Health Organization, tobacco use is one of the most serious risks to global public health in recent history. There are around 1.3 billion smokers globally now, contributing to approximately 5 million deaths per year. It started when Christopher Columbus, who discovered America, received tobacco as a present from Native Americans in the late 15th century. Tobacco was a huge hit among Europeans for they believed that it had mystical medicinal properties. Today, more and more tobacco companies were founded, resulting in the formation of entire industry with considerable strength. The overuse of tobacco, along with other potential hazard chemicals like tars, nicotine, and ammonia, create the second leading cause of death in the world, known as cigarette smoking. Around 25 to 30% of people in majority of developing countries are involved in smoking, including Malaysia. Based on the World Development Indicators, in 2018, Malaysia had a smoking rate of about 21.8% that was responsible for the high incidence of lung cancer. Throughout those years, society had made numerous attempts to reduce smoking rates and prevent disease development. However, it is indeed quite challenging due to some current problems of smoking in our country. The first problem is the younger initiation age of smoking. There are four factors affecting younger initiation age of smoking in Malaysia, which are tobacco, school, family and social factors. For tobacco factors, the easy availability of contraband cigarettes or cheap cigarettes correlates with smoking initiation at a younger age. According to the Nielsen Company USL Illicit Cigarette Study ICS in Malaysia, 62.3% of cigarettes in 2019 were smuggled in as cheap contraband cigarettes. Students were more likely to be able to purchase less expensive cigarettes. Malaysia was also one of the top 5 countries with the largest illicit tobacco use, according to the research. Illegal cigarettes are easier to obtain because they are not labelled with the same health warnings as seen on legal cigarettes. Furthermore, due to a lack of enforcement, the majority of adolescent smokers purchase their cigarettes through over-the-counter sources such as supermarkets, grocery stores and roadside stalls. About 53.2% of under-18-year-olds who bought cigarettes in retailers were not refused because of their age. Even though they are aware of the prohibition, sellers rarely ask for identification and sell cigarettes to minors. Smoking initiation at a young age might be influenced by a range of school factors. In school, students of a younger age were subjected to a great deal of pressure and stress. Those unable to cope with the increasing competition and have resulted in low grades tended to smoke as a stress reliever. In relation to stress, a systematic review in Asian countries has shown that the risk of smoking initiation increases when adolescents have poor school performance. Another study found that low achievers had a higher rate of smoking initiation than high or average achievers. Peer factors have also been identified as a key role in the initiation of smoking in other research. There is an increase in peer pressure during adolescence and teenagers may consider smoking as a normal thing to do. There are a variety of family factors that can contribute to the earlier age of smoking initiation. Parents function as role models and students whose parents smoke perceive smoking as grown up and mature. According to a meta-analysis, the odds of smoking among children increase significantly if one of their parents smoke, compared to children whose parents did not smoke, and higher odds were reported if both parents smoke. In addition, some children may have immaturity in thinking, impulsivity, and poor decision-making skills which creates a window of vulnerability for tobacco use. Stricter family monitoring significantly reduces the risk of initiation of smoking. Social factors also play an important role in smoking initiation at an early age. Adolescents with longer exposure to television were more likely to start smoking. Specifically, adolescents who watch 5 or more hours of television per day were 6 times more likely to initiate smoking compared to those who watch less than 2 hours. High exposure to cigarette advertisements on television is a significant predictor of adolescent smoking initiation. Other factors which are linked to the earlier age of smoking initiation include personality traits such as psychological reactance, sensation seeking and delinquency. Those with higher sensation seeking scores, psychosocial reactance scores and delinquent scores are at higher risk of smoking initiation. Generally, these traits are more common among adolescents. Now, we will look into the laws and regulations regarding smoking bans in Malaysia. The law 
laws regarding smoking in Malaysia is one of the laws that branch out from the global legal center and is overseer by the federal government of Malaysia. This law enforces everything about smoking including its fine and punishment. Before we dive any further into final details regarding the law of smoking, we will first get to know the five main categories of the law of smoking. The five categories are namely the law of smoking in public spaces, the law of cigarette packaging and labeling, the law regarding cigarettes advertising, promoting and sponsorship, the law of cigarettes content, and finally the law of cigarette sale. It can also be simplified as the acronym of CAPS. C A P P S C for content, A for advertise, P for places and package, and S for sales. Beginning with the law of smoking in public places, this law was implemented in the year 1980. This law divided the places that smoking is allowed and places that smoking is prohibited. This is to help in reducing the number of secondhand smokers by separating smokers and non smokers temporarily when the smoker is smoking. Most of the area in Malaysia is a non-smoking area. Some prominent examples include indoor workplaces, healthcare institutes, educational facilities, recreational facilities, and many more. On the other hand, smoking area in Malaysia are very few in numbers, such as at the pubs, casinos, open-air restaurants, and hotel guest rooms. Some other areas where smokers can smoke are places that are designated and labeled to be a smoking area. However, recently in the year 2019, a law was also established to ban smoking in all restaurants, including open air restaurants, which will definitely help in reducing the number of secondhand smokers. Next, we will look into the law of cigarette packaging and labeling. This law was established in the year 1976 in order to ensure that every smoker is aware of the effects and consequences of smoking. The packaging of cigarettes must include a combination of picture and packaging, a warning to the effect of smoking. This warning must occupy at least 50% at the front and 60% at the back of the package. Misleading messages such as smoking bring health benefits or non carcinogenic cigarettes is strictly prohibited as it may prompt more people to smoke without knowing the harm of it. In the year 1994, a law is also established to prohibit the selling of cigarettes to a person below the age of 18 as it is also illegal for them to smoke cigarettes. In addition to that, it is also prohibited for someone to sell cigarettes with the aid of machine, such as vending machine. It must be done from a person to person to ensure that the person buying the cigarettes is above the age of 18 and legal to buy it. However, a joint movement is being orchestrated to increase the age of buying cigarettes to 21 in the efforts of reducing more smokers. In the year 2003, all forms of advertising sponsorship are strictly banned in Malaysia. However, the laws of promoting cigarette is not clearly defined, which can cause some people to abuse the law in promoting more people to smoke. Therefore, it is in need of the authorities to amend the law to prevent the spread of smoking in Malaysia. Finally, the law of cigarettes content, which unfortunately has no such law in regard to the manipulation of the content in cigarettes. However, the emission of cigarette is controlled as such that the amount of nicotine, carbon monoxide, and tar is fixed. Therefore, the addition of external substances such as flavor and other harmful substances is not illegal and is not controlled and can be allowed to be done in Malaysia. For law offenders, which are people who break the law, including the law of smoking, they will strictly be punished according to the law that is only if they got caught. Some law will fine a person for 3,000 ringgit or 6 months in jail, while some law will fine a person for 10,000 ringgit or 2 years of jail. The punishment will depend on what kind of law is offended and how severe it is. That is all from me. I will pass on to the next presenter. Thank you. The third problem is the relationship between stress, anxiety, depression, and smoking. A study was done in 2019 to show the relationship between stress, depression, and anxiety to smoking. The study shows that feelings of sadness and loneliness were cues to smoking. Major depression has also been associated in the past with increased rates of daily smoking and elevated rates of nicotine dependence. Anxiety has also been shown to statistically higher in smokers compared to non-smokers. Being depressed also increases the risk of the smoker to use cigarettes daily. Based on the graph shown below, we can see that uh, 
depression is higher in non-smoker compared to non-smoker. Anxiety also has a higher percentage in smokers compared to non-smokers. Next part is ways to prevent smoking by different aspects such as government, family, school and healthcare setting. Government can take prevention in the form of policy level measures such as increased taxation of tobacco products. This strategy can maximize income, reduce cigarette consumption and improve health. As of 2019, the total taxes on the most sold cigarette brand in Malaysia was 45.7% of the retail price. However, Malaysia has yet to reach the suggested WHO benchmark of at least 75% tobacco tax over the retail price. Therefore, during a recent tobacco and smoking product taxation webinar in 2021, there is a suggested optimal excise rate of 0.77 ringgit Malaysia per stick, a 92.1% increase in the excise tax rate, which is equivalent to 61.8% excise tax of the retail price. Then, enforcement of laws by prohibiting the sale of tobacco products to people under the age of 18. The law also prohibits the sale of tobacco by a vending machine, the internet, small packets of cigarettes, and single cigarettes. Smoking is allowed at pubs, nightclubs, casino, and non-air-conditioned public transport terminals. However, it is prohibited in specified public places and workplaces such as restaurants and health, education, government, and cultural facilities. Restrictions on advertising and mandatory health warnings on package. The front and back of the packaging must include rotating combined pictures and tax health warnings that take up 50% of the front and 60% of the rear. The warning must be written in Malay on the front panel and English on the rear panel. Mass media campaigns can also play an important role in preventing smoking by disseminating through television, radio, print media and billboards. The cessation related message informing smokers and motivating them to quit. These campaigns can effectively keep tobacco control on the social and political agenda, legitimize community action and trigger other interventions. It is designed to change individual smoking behavior and social norms for smoking. Family, especially parents, influences a child's susceptibility to smoke. When either parent smoke, the child's chance of starting smoking was four times higher than when both parents did not smoke. Therefore, parents should be good role models by not smoking and establishing a free smoke home. Besides, parents can educate the child about smoking by explaining the symptoms of many smoking-related illnesses, either an immediate risk or long-term risk to their health and well-being. School-based intervention which aim to reduce smoking initiation and improve outcomes for children and teens by reducing modifiable risk factors and bolstering protective factors. The curriculum approach should include education standards that give students an understanding of the health risk, analyze the influences of family, peers, culture and media on usage patterns, develop interpersonal skills to resist temptations, and practice goal-setting and decision-making skills to protect against use of tobacco. School also must have clear tobacco control policies. Lastly, healthcare professionals can help the smoker that want to quit by advising them to quit, offering brief counselling, prescribing cessation medications, connecting them to additional resources like a quit line, and following up with continued support to help prevent relapse. In conclusion, the smoking prevalence in Malaysia keeps increasing year by year. Smoking causes many problems for the smoker themselves, people around them, and the environment. There are three main factors highlighted that contribute to the current smoking problem in Malaysia, which is the initiation of smoking at a younger age, the law related to the smoking ban, and the individual psychological status. Despite that, many initiatives have been done to prevent smoking and help smokers quit smoking. Now is the time to save life by making smoking illegal in Malaysia and the smoker to take the self-initiative to stop smoking.